We call those house slaves and slave catchers. And Kwame McCoy is the epitome of a slave catcher and a house slave. We call those house slaves and slave catchers. We want the world to know what is happening in Guyana. The rosy picture that the government attempts to paint is reminiscent of Russia and Animal Farm. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Tour News, a 20-year-old accounts clerk on Wednesday appeared at the Georgetown Magistrates Court after she was charged with 24 counts of larceny in connection with the alleged theft from BPATS, a retail store at 111 Regent Street, Lacey Town, Georgetown. Former accounts clerk at BPATS store, Janacy Jacobs. Former accounts clerk at BPATS store, Janacy Jacobs. Janacy Jacobs, who resides at Lot 17 Unity Street, LaGrange, West Bank, Demerara, is accused of stealing a total of $16,700,000. $165,027 from BPATS between September 2023 and August 2024. She appeared before Principal Magistrate Faith McGusty who read the charges to her in which she pleaded not guilty to all. According to police statements presented in court, Jacobs was hired by BPATS as an accounts clerk on February 8, 2023. Her duties included managing online payments to suppliers and service providers. On August 23, 2024, it was discovered that Jacobs allegedly had used her personal login credentials to access the store's accounting system and transfer funds from BPATS bank accounts to her own personal account on 24 separate occasions between September 21, 2023 and August 8, 2024. Following the discovery, a report was filed, leading to an investigation. Jacobs was arrested, informed of the allegations, and admitted to transferring and withdrawing the stolen funds. She was subsequently charged with the offenses. During the court proceedings, Jacobs attorney, Lajmi Rahamat, requested bail, emphasizing her client's young age and lack of prior convictions. The prosecutor did not oppose the bail request. Consequently, bail was granted at $800,000 per charge. Jacobs is scheduled to return to court on September September 25, 2024. President Irfan Ali, Acting Police Commissioner Clifton Haken and Head of the Special Organized Crime Unit, Assistant Commissioner Fazal Karimach, all dodged questions today on the ongoing investigations of alleged acts of corruption within the Guyana Police Force and the allegedly involvement of senior officers. Just after launching the National Defense Institute, President Irfan Ali was questioned on the issue by journalists but said it is the Special Organized Crime Unit that is handling the matter and he will not intrude. That's a matter that is under investigation. That is a matter that SOCU is handling and they are doing so independently so I can't give an update, President Ali said. Acting Police Commissioner Clifton Haken hopscotched around questions on the issue and said it is the head of SOCU who should be asked questions about the investigations. I am not interfering with that matter, and I am giving them latitude to do exactly what they have to do, he can said. Contacted today by news source, the head of SOCU, Assistant Commissioner Karimach, would only say that the investigations are ongoing. He denied reports in another section of the press that the probe has been drawing blanks. Almost two months ago, Assistant Police Commissioner Calvin Brutus proceeded on leave to allow an investigation into claims against him of financial impropriety amid reports of widespread corruption in the police force. Mr. Brutus has been relatively silent on the issue, but the investigation against him has been widespread. As part of the investigations, SOCU sought and was granted an order to freeze a bank account which was reportedly linked to Mr. Brutus' wife. The Investigators have also been examining the accounts of the police force's credit union after noticing some accounts with unusually large deposits. Security officials in Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago have launched an investigation into a bomb threat made against the Chedi Jagan International Airport and regional carrier Caribbean Airlines. Once the threat was received, security officials in both Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago were alerted.
In the rambling phone call, which was heard by news source, the man claimed to have been part of a group that was planning an incident against the airline and the local airport. He said he was no longer part of the group, but wanted the authorities to be warned. While he was questioned about the threat, he told the airline employee that she was asking too many questions and demanded to speak to a manager of the airline. News source understands that the telephone companies operating in Diana have been contacted to assist with the investigations and a possible trace of the call. Police officials in Diana have confirmed that an investigation into the threat is ongoing. Just last week, a threat was issued against the Marriott Hotel in Georgetown. It was later determined that the threatening call was a prank. There has been no arrest in that case. Attorney General Anil Nanlal has announced plans by the government to update the country's cybercrime legislation with a new regulatory framework that will specifically cover social media. Appearing on his weekly television and social media program, Issues in the News, the Attorney General said he has become tired of seeing citizens being harassed and slandered on social media. Media. He warned that the government will not sit idly by and ignore attacks using social media. Nan Law said the abuse of freedom of speech will not be condoned. There is no country whose laws, including the United States whose laws are quite liberal, know where the laws will justify or permit the type of publications that emanate from these social media platforms. So, the time has come in Diana for us to pay serious attention to regulating cyberspace because currently it is completely unregulated and it is the platform for the slaughtering of people's reputation. Character, social lives and the lives of their families, the Attorney General stated. In recent weeks, some government officials have been filing and threatening lawsuits against a number of social media personalities while claiming to be victims of slander. Mr. Nan Law said the attacks have also been extended to private citizens and those attacks have been causing tremendous harm to people's character and reputation. He said condign penalties will be introduced. Mr. Nan Law said social media in Guyana has been a free-for-all, but the time will come when all social media will be regulated by new laws to be introduced by the government. The duty of a state and the responsibility of a government holding office in that the state is to bring regulation so that which is unregulated and is causing public harm and this onslaught emanating from the social media platforms are causing public and private harm in this country and it will not continue without a reaction from the government, Mr. Nan Law said. The Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation marked a significant medical milestone on July 10, 2024 by successfully performing a life-saving emergency repair of a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm, a procedure that has been completed only three times in Diana's history. This achievement underscores the expertise and commitment of the GPHC's vascular surgery team, led by consultant vascular surgeon Dr. Carlos Martin. An abdominal aortic aneurysm occurs when the aorta, the body's largest artery, develops a dangerous bulge due to a weakness in the vessel wall. A rupture is a life-threatening medical emergency with a grim 65% mortality rate before patients even reach the hospital. Once a patient arrives in the emergency room, the survival rate drops by 1% per minute, and even after reaching the operating table, only 50% of patients survive the surgery. These stark statistics make the recent successful surgery at GPHC particularly extraordinary. The latest procedure was performed on a 56-year-old man who was flown to the GPHC from Diana's interior in critical condition, having lost 5 liters of blood and with a hemoglobin level of just 7 grams divided by DL. Upon arrival at GPHC's accident and emergency department, the vascular surgery team swiftly stabilized the patient and prepared for the complex surgery. Over an 8-hour operation, Dr. Martin and his team repaired a large inferior aortic and common iliac artery aneurysm with a free rupture, ultimately saving the patient's life. Reflecting on the successful surgery, 
Dr. Martin emphasized the importance of teamwork and the hospital's ongoing investment in specialized supplies and medical training. He also expressed gratitude to the hospital's administration and clinical teams for their collaboration, which was critical to the patient's survival. Prior to 2021, such surgeries were unavailable in Diana, and patients with ruptured AAS would not have survived. Thanks to advancements in the country's healthcare system and the skill of the GPHC's medical teams, Three patients have now been saved in the last three years following AA ruptures. This remarkable achievement is a testament to GPHC's dedication to providing cutting-edge medical care and ensuring that the people of Diana have access to life-saving treatments. The hospital remains committed to pushing the boundaries of healthcare excellence and improving outcomes for patients across the country. Kaitor News, the two Guyana Defense Force ranks who were nabbed in July with 316 pounds of Ghana, made their third court appearance yesterday where one was jailed and the other was granted bail. GDF ranks Edward McCormont, a 40-year-old from Caneville, East Band Demerara, and John Johnson, a 24-year-old from Tyneri Docks. EBD appeared before Principal Magistrate Faith McGusty at the Georgetown Magistrates Court. During the court proceedings, McCormont changed his plea from not guilty to guilty and was sentenced to three years in prison. He was represented by attorney Felicia Williams. McCormont admitted to possessing and trafficking the drugs. He also expressed ignorance about the legal status of marijuana, stating, no, I didn't know marijuana was illegal, McCormon told the court. Meanwhile, Johnson's lawyer Bernard Da Silva made an application for bail citing that his client was neither the driver nor owner of the vehicle containing the drugs. As such, bail was granted to Johnson in the sum of $350,000 with conditions requiring him to report to the East La Penitence Police Station. The matter has been adjourned to September 25, 2024 for further report and disclosure. McCormon and Johnson were nabbed on July 27. 2024 with 316 pounds of Ghana during an intelligence-led police operation. At around 2120 HRS, acting on information received, officers from the special branch and other units intercepted a Route 42 motor bus on Mandela Avenue. McCormont was driving and Johnson was in the front passenger seat. Both men were in uniform. A search of the vehicle revealed 49 large parcels wrapped in transparent plastic on the bus seats, containing leaves, seeds, and stems suspected to be cannabis. The drugs were lodged and calculated. The soldiers were told of the offense and were charged. We want the world to know what is happening in Guyana. The rosy picture that the government attempts to paint is reminiscent of Russia and Animal Farm. The picture you're getting from the government is not true. All is not rosy in Guyana. And that's why we staged the protest. In addition to that, this government is the most dangerous, deceitful government who manufactures lies faster than all of the car and vehicle manufacturers in the world manufacture cars. Nothing this government says is true. Nothing the Ghana police force says is true. It is something, Heather, that has not been seen except in autocratic governments, except with apartheid governments, except with despotic and ethnocratic governments. They lie for everything lies are an official policy of the PPP government, and I will prove it. Now, following the protest on Monday, the government announced that they will criminalize persons who criticize them on social media. They, they, they couched it, the attorney general, as people attacking citizens. Well, have you gone on the internet or Twitter or whatever to see how other governments are attacked every day? The United States, the bastion of democracy. Do you see how the president is attacked every day and criticized? Who are these people? Who are these East Indian extremists in the PPP who think that they should criminalize 
their opponents' criticism of them. And that's what they are, extremist East Indians in the PPP. I make no apologies for saying that because there are East Indians in the country who are not extremists, who are not part of the PPP, who don't condemn, sorry, condone PPP racism. And then they have a few Blacks, afro guyanese citizens like Kwame McCoy and Onish Waldron and others who are just there to be their apologists. They want power, you see. They want political power. They want to exercise authority. They want to be seen as elites in the society. So they have ingratiated themselves among the racists. And they condone the slaughter of afro guyanese by dead squads formed by the racists. They condone the attacks on afro guyanese communities. They condone the depletion of resources in afro guyanese villages and NDCs and regions. They condone it. They condone discrimination against afro guyanese you see, back during chattel slavery, chattel slavery, we had people like those who sold us out, sold out, sold out the Africans, pointed them out where they were hiding, recaptured them when they tried to escape from white, brutal slave owners. We call those house slaves and slave catchers. And Kwame McCoy is the epitome of a slave catcher and a house slave. We call those house slaves and slave catchers. Yes, we must call them out for who they are. So yesterday, myself and Mr. Paul Slow, former assistant police commissioner and the former chairman of the police service commission, a distinguished Guyanese who they are trying to smear were invited to participate in a discussion with talk show host Junior George on his show, Right Along, that is widely watched around the Caribbean and here in the United States. Mr. George is Grenadian. He's a Grenadian national, but he's based here in New York. But his show, which attracts thousands of viewers around the world, but particularly in the, Car in the Caribbean, is widely viewed in response to our protest on the eastern parkway he invited me and mr slow to be on his program yesterday and we've been getting invitations from news broadcasts programs all over new york and the caribbean so far i've done six interviews so our protest was highly successful It created an awareness that hitherto was not known. These facts were not known about what is happening in Guyana. So on the program, we discussed exactly the facts about what's happening in Guyana. What happened in Mocha, what's happening with me and their so-called criminal case, what is happening with me and Paul Slow and their so-called criminal case. We discussed the fact that blacks are not getting contracts. Now, they're trying to give a couple of black people contracts, but they're to clean drains and build bridges. While their East Indian supporters get billions of dollars and hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts. During that program, convicted criminal Kwame McCoy, I should say twice convicted criminal, an accused and alleged pedophile Kwame McCoy who's the so-called minister of government called into the program to try to intimidate us. It didn't work. He failed. He looked like a fool. He tried to yell during the program. He tried to usurp the authority of the moderator. It didn't work. So he felt defeated. So like a little child, he ran back home to his, to his puppet masters. And they sent him out today to do a broadcast to attack me and Paul Slow. 
Well, Mr. Slow is very able and capable of responding to Kwame McCoy. Keep sharing the link, everybody. But I will respond to him. He began his statement by saying, I manufacture stuff. I challenge him today to state what I have manufactured. Propaganda doesn't work anymore, Kwame. This is not the era of, of uh, communism. The old PPP tactic of empty rhetoric, stupid, silly talk, and idle propaganda aimed at tearing down doesn't work anymore. The world is too connected. At a click of a finger, someone can do a research through Google and find out that you're a liar as the people have been doing. You're a liar, Kwame. You're a malicious, deceitful liar. And I challenge you, unreservedly, I challenge you to put forward your evidence of where I have manufactured stuff. The repetition, but you don't have any repetition, but the repetition, the government doesn't have any repetition either. But in order to restore some level of credibility of your government, I challenge you, Mr. McCoy, if that's what you call yourself, to produce the evidence, any form of evidence to show what I manufacture. I am not the PPP. You see, my Guyanese brothers and sisters and friends of Guyana, when we talk about the PPP government and their members, we give you facts. We give you facts. Whenever they talk about us, they manufacture stuff. They make it up in order to smear us and in order to scare people from associating with us. They discuss the strategy to scare. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula, packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you Mr. C. It is said it costs one and a half million dollars for a license and one and a half million dollars per weapon. I, I can't believe this is happening. 